We are live. Welcome to She-Hulk episode 8 thoughts. And this episode is called Rip It and Rip It and Rip It. So, spoilers for the you leading up to this point, including this episode. And yeah, so based on the ending of episode 5, we knew that there would be an episode with, well, the trailers also, but yeah, an episode with Daredevil. And yeah, so what a lot of us were hoping was that both would get, you know, we'd, we'd get scenes of both doing some vigilantism and, you know, a courtroom scene where one of them is defending and the other is prosecuting, you know, I had hoped it would be like, kingpin or something but yeah this was still I, I really really enjoyed this episode so it's yeah and and you know i don't think that it's a problem you know so yeah that was the the end of episode five episode six and seven didn't have it i really don't think that's a problem i think it's perfectly fine that I definitely think it was worth the wait. So, yeah. I, you know, we, we opened the episode with a fun compilation at the start of her doing stuff other than being a hero using the Hulk form. I really love how ridiculous Leapfrog is just right from the start and all the way through. I mean, yeah. In his mind, he's probably like Batman. You know, he's rich and he's got this secret lair, although this big neon... It's, you know, sign announcing it to the world, and he, you know, but he also has all these people working for, I, I gotta admit, I don't remember, I remember that there's a difference between goons and henchmen, I'm, I, yeah, I don't know, remember exactly what, but yeah, just, you know, through and through, and then there at the end, like, he's literally, you know, he paid, he has a, you know, he had this lawyer, that's very expensive, and she's literally telling him, look, if you stop now, if you agree to, you know, we can we can try to get you a, a reduced sentence, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be completely devastating for, you know, and then instead, you know, he's like, I'm rich, I have technology, <laughs> I think I know what I'm doing here, okay, just... Yeah, you, you, you just, you do your little lawyer thing, you know, some of us didn't have to work very hard to, to get where they are, okay, just, and, and jumps out the window without, like, thinking, is the suit meant for that? Is it, is it good to, to land, you know, he can't pull off a superhero landing, possibly because he's a villain. And, you know, I, let's see, yeah, you know, I, I really love the, the, seeing the two lawyers going up against each other in the courtroom, and, you know, it's revealed that Matt is going to be representing Luke, and he's late, so he must have been fighting ninjas with Elektra. And... Yeah, you know, he he defends him legally because of the suit. And he's lying. Don't ask me how I know. We can all tell he's lying, Mr. Murdoch. <laughs> he's not in in his defense, he's not used to that. He's not used to everyone around being able to tell that guy is lying for the legal you know. I also I was I quite enjoyed the the call, you know, Miss Walters. I'm being attacked, legally or physically, physically, but poss possibly also legally. And Matt and Jen at the bar, very sweet, very charming, and love seeing Daredevil and She-Hulk do the superhero thing together. Both getting great moments. He even gets another hallway scene, although it's interrupted by her, you know, jumping down through the, yeah, no wonder they end up in bed, and you can't have Daredevil 
without him chilling out on inner city rooftops late at night. Yeesh, Josh still cannot accept that the female lawyers do not want him touching them. And, you know, at first, it's like, I was... I actually thought at first, did he literally contact his lawyer when she's off the job and then when he doesn't get an immediate response threaten to call her uh, uh, yeah the, the guy higher up in the in the food chain just to brag that he has a Wakandan spear and he oh I spent a whole million on it. But no, he does, you know, it is actually, no, yeah, yeah, the, the Wakandans are saying, you know, colonizers took that, so, it, you know, and, and he's like, but I, I have the receipt. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah, and in the, in the, there wasn't a post credit scene, but the credits are fun to watch. If I recall, there was, like, a bit where you know, Josh is bidding on auction stuff, and Leapfrog, if I recall, he was even in costume, is there also bidding, which, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, let's see. Yeah, and Jen realizes it's weird that the episode will show the, the gala, too, and realizes next week must be the finale, and it's like, is it another Hulk, but he's red, which, you know, a lot, yeah, that is that is definitely something that a lot of us has have been anticipating. Maybe, the, maybe there will be a red Hulk. And she even says, or am I getting fridged? So, I would be extremely surprised if Jennifer Walters intentionally read comic books, or, like, trivia about them, so she knows, like, the, the yeah, she actually under, knows the tropes. You know, she, she, because, like, fridging, you know, if you don't know anything about comic books, you might not know what that is. I'm, I'm not sure, has that even, outside of, like, I, I know comic books, comic book movies are now mainstream, but I'm not sure it's entered the mainstream outside of that, if that makes any sense to say, you know, just... Yeah, so that's really cool. And and she's sitting there like, I don't understand why you're still here. Uh, you know, this, what is this scene? And we see what the intelligentsia had planned. As we're shaming her with revenge porn, enraging her, and just, yeah. The, the, I really appreciate that it's tackling something so prevalent and, and current. And as usual, I recommend watching the video by Jesse Gender. And I think that is, I'm gonna. Let's see, is there anything else at all? I, you know, laughed at the the. What was it? You know, I don't want to be a baby frog. I thought tadpole. Yeah, that's what a baby frog. You know, and the. Yeah, and you know, the the filming and editing of, of the hallway scene obviously is not as good as the, the Netflix versions. And yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see if they are going to, you know, this is this is very much an, an MCU version of Netflix's Daredevil. You know, he, he smiles more, he quips more. He gets hurt less, you know, so, so yeah, the, and, yeah, at, at least compared to the, the solo series, I have not watched Defenders yet, I am getting to it. What do you mean, why? So the, the, yeah, it is very likely that it will that that the daredevil we get the the when when they do born again that it will be more similar to this than the netflix ones 
I personally can't help but wonder if they are like AV testing because this is like bringing him back and giving you know th this role like it's fun and it's it's really great how they you know like they, they are probably the only two people like uh, the the big difference between them is that she does not have a secret identity but other than that you know it's the thing of being a lawyer and trying to help people but also trying to help people as a vigilante you know that nobody else can quite relate to that just you know no not very many MCU heroes are lawyers also so and the let's see yeah I, I can't help but wonder if they're like seeing okay how do people respond to this MCU ified version of Netflix's Daredevil and if a lot of people are really raising and think about it maybe they will be like okay we gotta go more Netflix that's what I'm hoping that's what I'd like to think but we'll we'll see I'll, uh, I suppose we won't but we'll see how if if the Daredevil if Daredevil Born Again will be Netflix or MCU or somewhere in the middle I think you could probably find somewhere in the middle this is not that this is not the middle this is very MCU Daredevil but yeah not much that's I you know great to see a woman comfortable with her sexuality and enjoying sex um, yeah I believe that is everything so catch you next week